So growing up as a kid, I was a massive fan of Doctor Who at the time. And uh, this is when Tom Baker was playing uh, the Doctor. And uh, I really, really wanted my own sonic screwdriver. And I actually made one when I was a kid out of some plastic tubing and whatever I could actually get my hands on. But it didn't actually uh, do anything. Now I know that you can actually buy a uh, toy replica of the sonic screwdriver that Tom Baker used but uh, even looking at some of the old pictures it doesn't quite look the same and a lot of people also say that are uh, die hard Doctor Who fans that it doesn't even make the uh, correct noise that Tom Baker's sonic screwdriver made. So when I was actually uh, filming my last video on the uh, Wi-Fi jammer update I thought wouldn't it be really cool if I uh, built myself a replica sonic screwdriver but it also was a wi-fi jammer as well so I thought wouldn't it be cool if I uh, actually did a kind of a hack along video where you actually see me thinking and working out uh, to build a replica sonic screwdriver that's also a wi-fi jammer and uh, the majority of the uh, parts that I'm going to use to actually build this are uh, these cheap torches that you can get off eBay and most of these only cost a pound each and free shipping so uh, I'm going to use this as the uh, basis for the uh, body of the sonic screwdriver and build in all the parts for the uh, wi-fi jammer as well so here are some of the bodies of the torches now that I've got them opened up and uh, this particular one here I'm going to use this for the base of the sonic screwdriver because it's uh, just the right length to fit one of these batteries in here so I'm going to be using the same batteries as in the previous video and if I remove the lens and the LEDs etc then what I should be able to do is pop the battery in once it's charged up use the original uh, end cap for this with a screw on screw it in place use the uh, sonic screwdriver and when the battery is depleted I can unscrew it and then pop the battery out and charge it up and then pop it back in again so I've got this body here and this is going to be the middle of the sonic screwdriver and uh, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to mount the uh, little uh, transmitters inside there so I've already got them prepared with heat shrink tubing so I can stack two either side there and I can cut the uh, actual uh, tubing down a little bit so I don't have it quite as long so uh, there should be plenty of room for me to actually stack the uh, little AV transmitters inside there and uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to have the switch on here I probably am or I'm going to have a little tactile switch on this smaller torch here to actually turn the jammer on and off and this is going to be the top part of the sonic screwdriver and uh, I'm going to have my uh, little antenna on the end here so it's going to be sort of uh, that kind of length there so that's my hand so uh, it's about the same length as the uh, picture that uh, you've seen with Tom Baker holding and uh, it probably is going to look a little bit more authentic than the actual uh, plastic toy so what I've actually done with this torch that I'm going to use as my uh, battery holder I've uh, removed the uh, LEDs here because it was a little bit too short for me to actually fit the battery in so now when I pop the battery in I've got that gap there of probably around 10 millimeters so I'm going to use this uh, PCB here I'm going to remove all these uh, LEDs from it and then mount it back into the torch like so so this is now my battery holder and have the uh, two power wires coming out from the top of here going into uh, the middle section that's going to actually power the little AV transmitters so there's the PCB in place I've uh, took all the LEDs off and I've also flipped it around and resoldered the spring on the other side and that PCB has turned out to be uh, really really good because it's soldered in place here and I've got my two points there for my uh, positive and negative and I've got the base here as well and I think what I'm going to do is have this base as the uh, actual on off switch I think that'll work out really really well and the uh, battery just fits inside there but uh, what I'm going to do is put some epoxy putty in here as well just to give it a little bit more strength because this metal it's kind of a uh, alloy mix and the solder doesn't adhere to it that well so just to give it some more strength I'm going to use some epoxy putty as well 
and I decided not to use epoxy putty what I've actually done is mixed up some two-part epoxy and just poured it in there so it's uh, like it's uh, potted now it's uh, a lot neater job and the reason I wanted to add that is because uh, when you actually butt the battery up to that spring underneath there and you've got the base on as well there's a little bit of pressure on top here so I don't want it actually popping off and failing so this is the body from the larger torch that I've uh, cut down and is going to house the AV transmitters inside and that's going to just fit on the uh, top of the uh, torch that is now going to house the battery and I'm going to use both of the bases from uh, these two torches now what I'm going to do this is this smaller one that's housing the battery and I've got the uh, bottom of the bigger one here and the threads actually fit into the smaller one quite nicely so we've got this little bit of a lip here at the base and I can use the on off switch to turn the uh, jammer on and off but uh, on the uh, larger one that's going to contain the uh, actual AV transmitters this is the uh, bottom of the smaller torch I hope it's not getting too complicated but uh, that's going to screw on the top of this one and that is going to be uh, connected there and uh, this hole here that houses the on off switch on this one is just the right diameter to screw this smaller bodied one in so we can actually fix it by screwing it in instead of actually gluing it together and what that uh, means is we can actually take it apart and do any maintenance on it in the future and it just looks a lot more professional rather than actually using glue and it's just a fluke that it actually fits in there quite nicely so I'm going to fit this part of the house into the uh, bottom battery compartment using epoxy but uh, I've just ground it around here on the inside just to reduce that a little bit so I've got a little bit of a lip between this one and the uh, actual battery housing so when I do epoxy it that uh, lip will make a uh, much stronger joint so we won't end up snapping it in place there so epoxy this uh, part directly onto that part and then we can go about mounting the little AV transmitters inside there so while that epoxy is setting what I'm actually going to do is remove the switch out of uh, this uh, bottom cap here so I can screw this uh, smaller torch into the top there like I said previously and I also I could leave that switch in place but uh, I want to actually uh, put the uh, coax up and through this actual torch so I'm just going to remove all of that switch there I'm also going to be cutting this down slightly as well this is a uh, fake police torch and uh, police is a well-known brand but uh, for 99 pence it's obviously not buying a uh, genuine one but I'm going to cut this to shorten it off there just to get rid of that logo because uh, all of this sonic screwdriver apart from a few little bits at the end I'm just going to leave it all with this uh, silver finish on I'm not going to paint it so it should be a, a lot better that way rather than painting because of course if you paint something it does end up getting scratched and when it starts to scratch it uh, does look a, a little bit messy so if you can leave all the metal in place then uh, you know it's going to be uh, look a lot better over time so my original idea was to actually screw this directly onto this uh, end cap here once I've got rid of the uh, on off switch but unfortunately the lip on there is a little bit too wide to uh, grab the threads here so what I'm going to do is ground away the threads so it just slips directly into there and this edge here butts up against the base of this end cap here and then I'll just flow a little bit of epoxy inside there to attach it permanently so the epoxy is all dry and uh, I've just got it together just uh, screwed it all together to give a uh, bit of a feel what it's going to actually look like and how big it's actually going to be I haven't put the AV transmitters in there yet but uh, I want to think about now about the actual antenna for this uh, jammer now what I'm going to do is a piece in the uh, body of the sonic screwdriver here which I'm going to use these two uh, plastic um, screw threaded things from I'd, I'm not sure where I've actually got these from but I think they were off some kind of telescopic thing at some time and I saved a few of them so I'm going to actually glue two together like that and uh, put them 
on uh, this part of the sonic screwdriver and I'm going to spray these silver now I want these to be plastic because that's where I'm going to mount the antenna and I've got a dipole antenna here and the length of these two together like this is uh, round about 50 millimeters so I should be able to put a uh, dipole antenna in the middle of those because that way because this is plastic the uh, actual signal that the uh, generator makes will be able to uh, radiate out from there obviously if I had it in uh, a metal part of the body then it'll be next to useless so these are going to be plastic and I'm going to spray them silver and uh, house a uh, simple dipole antenna in there and I'm only going to use the one antenna as well I'm going to wire all four transmitters into this single dipole you can get away with doing that it's not as good as uh, having uh, four independent antennas but um, for what this is it's mainly you know to make a sonic screwdriver that is also something useful i.e a wi-fi jammer i think that'll work out okay so nothing too complicated here i've just tied all the positives together and uh, all the grounds together on the uh, little transmitters there and i'm going to wire them directly into the two power wires that are controlled by the switch on the bottom here and i'm also going to put a uh, power line in for an led at the top here somewhere and uh, i'll probably have to put a uh, resistor in line as well to bring the voltage down because the battery in this runs at around uh, four volts when it's fully charged and i'm going to do a similar job with the coax cables here for the rf signal itself now i could actually just strip back these uh, coax cables to reveal the inner core like on this little dipole here but um, that and that would probably work probably similar to how this dipole is going to work but um, i'm going to strip them back and put that dipole on but if you didn't want to do that then just stripping the uh, outer braid away and revealing the inner core there at about 25 millimeters would also do the job just as well because we're just trying to get some uh, noise out of uh, this thing to block other signals and of course because it's a sonic screwdriver it is a gimmick as well so as long as it does uh, a, a job at blocking the uh, signals at close range then I'll be happy with that so the dipole antenna is in place and I ended up making my own dipole antenna it just turned out uh, a little bit easier that way but if you're new to my channel and uh, you're not sure how to make one of these then do a quick search on my videos I've uh, done quite a few different videos explaining how to actually make these so next I want to move on to the top part of the sonic screwdriver, the actual sensor part. And again I've got a reflector here from one of the torches that we've used in this build. And it's come from this small torch here. And if I turn it that way around it's got this nice conical shape which is uh, actually prevalent on the original sonic screwdriver and uh, it's already got a hole in it so the red LED will fit in there quite nicely. And I've also got this reflector that I've uh, took from one of the torches. It uh, had multiple LEDs in there and what I'm going to do I'm going to be painting this black and this is actually painted red so I'm going to mount that inside there so we've got that ring shape going on like uh, the original sonic screwdriver and for the uh, back of it i've got this little knob that i've taken off something that i've uh, actually stripped down and used parts somewhere else and i've just saved this and uh, i can stick that on the back and uh, it actually makes up quite a nice uh, sensor for the top of the sonic screwdriver so quick note to self just uh, make sure that whatever you're trying to make you uh, keep reminding yourself of the uh, picture so you don't get the colors mixed up so now I've got the uh, colors correct on this little sensor thing what uh, I've actually decided to do I've taken the uh, bigger reflector out of the other torch because I think that that will probably look a bit better because the actual sonic screwdriver itself is uh, considerably bigger than the uh, one in the photograph it's uh, a lot wider to uh, accommodate the battery and the uh, little RF boards in there so I think uh, this bigger one is going to look uh, a lot better in proportion to the uh, sonic screwdriver itself and uh, I'm also going to leave it silver so I don't have to bother painting that one so here is the uh, sonic screwdriver it's all finished and uh, i've got the battery in there so 
it actually uh, works as well and uh, I'm really pleased how this actually turned out but uh, I just want to show you a quick test on the uh, spectrum analyzer to show you actually working so I've got the spectrum analyzer fired up and uh, as you can see it's quite quiet along the spectrum there so what I'm going to do is switch on the sonic screwdriver and then we'll get a visual representation of all the noise it makes So as you can see now that the uh, jammer is actually turned on the amount of red on that top bar there it's completely blocking any Wi-Fi wi -fi signals along that uh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, range and you can also see in the bottom right hand corner there that I'm no longer connected to my uh, router in the house. So I hope you enjoyed this video it was uh, a little bit uh, on the fly it's just an idea that I had in my head I've been wanting to do it for quite some time and uh, I'd really do love uh, actually creating stuff and uh, hacking on the fly like that I uh, do find it extremely enjoyable so hopefully you did as well and uh, if you did please uh, give it a thumbs up any uh, questions or comments drop them below and I'll uh, do my best to answer them and uh, I'll also put links to uh, the different torches that I used I uh, purchased off eBay so you can actually go out there and purchase the same ones if you actually want to recreate this for yourself so as I said hopefully you found the uh, video useful and informative and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one